Hey guys, what's going on? Look at this new camera angle, this is sick. So much better than before. Oh. This is, I don't know. I don't know why it, make, it doesn't make a difference, does it? It doesn't feel any different, but yeah. I have to look up at you. It's like looking down on me. But yeah, that's still a V star. As the top says. You may know, or you may not know, which film that is from. Terminator, of course. If you don't know about that, then where have you been? Like, well, then you're probably younger than me. That's probably why. But yeah, oh, everyone knows Terminator. How can you not? <laughs> but yeah, this is podcast seventeen. Um, I've been doing live streams, so I've kind of said a lot on there. Is why it feels like a podcast. Well, kind of. But you're playing a video game at the same time. So you can't really get in the zone of what you're saying. But here we are. Podcast 17. I hope you like this new view of my room. And did you see Batman? He, he just thought he would uh, join me on this uh, podcast. Is that sneaking in in the background there? Little cameo from Batman. If you've seen my vlogs for a while now, you know all about that Batman character right there. He's just annoying that poster of Marvel. It's like, it's such a contradiction in my room. Like, you've got Batman DC comics, you've got a Marvel poster. Like, what am I doing? What's going on? But yeah, that is my room. And I hope you like this new angle. Um, a lot more lighting up here. Because there's a light directly above you. That's why. Otherwise, like before, it was just, I had to get another lamp in my room just to get the right angle. Um, but yeah, here we are. I hope you don't mind seeing the mic. Um, because I had it further away last time, it didn't really work. Like, because you need a better sound. But I, I've heard that these mics aren't actually that good. I paid enough for it, bloody hell. You know what I mean? A hundred quid. It better be good enough. But I've heard from other, on, you know, on other YouTube channels that they, they don't rate them. I don't know. Well, we'll see. This is my annoying whining boring voice or is it the mic or both or neither but yeah it's podcast 17 i just thought i'd talk about i don't know, like me kind of it's always about me in it like i'm a narcissist no it's part of the job title in it youtuber no but i saw um a podcast of another youtuber that i've been following for a while when he was talking about like the formative years of how he got to where he was and how he like not growing up but like you know it like from when he was like in his 20s early 20s like teenage years to like my age 25 26 and how he changed but technically he's still the same person but people just accept him more now i don't know if that makes any sense but yes yeah, another youtuber i've been watching for a while um yeah you've got the big youtubers the vloggers that make millions and they're big and they're famous and they have a normal life but this guy kind of does so I can relate more. Um, but yeah, I haven't travelled as much as this, as this guy in particular has. Uh, that's the difference, but... Um, no, I mean, he, I don't know. Let's talk, let's talk from my point of view. Uh, that, you know, there's moments that, like, in your life define you or make you better or you remember for good or bad reasons, you know. There's, well, I can put it into years. Like certain years that were defining. For me, you know, I, a lot of people, like, they attribute one thing to, like, changing the rest of their life. One decision, one moment, one thing they did or didn't do, you know. But you got, what I've learned is, like, don't, don't live with regret because that's, like, that's wrong. And don't live with blame either. Because when you blame someone else, then, you know, you're, you're not being responsible it could be your fault, whatever it is. People in life don't want to be wrong. If you know what I mean, people don't want to be... They want to think they're right in what they believe. You know, but sometimes you're wrong. And it's got to be the people around you that will tell you that. And you know, that's what we were saying. And uh, no, for me, 2010 was a big year, like... Mainly because I had a huge back operation. Well, that's the Yeah, that's it, really. That was the main learning curve. 16 years old, 
my GCSEs as well. I, th I did them before the operation, I think. But am, am I getting this wrong? No, no. Anyway, around that time. Yeah, definitely. I think the same year. But no, the same year, um, 2010, Inter Milan. My Italian, my favourite Italian team won the Champions League. That was great. Just before I went in, I think. And that same year was the South Africa World Cup. But I remember watching all of that in a hospital bed and being ill the whole time. And well, I was home for the final. Holland versus Spain. If you remember that fly kick from De Jong. That's all I remember. And I remember just being ill at home. I just got home, I still weren't right. Because when they put you under anaesthetic, it's just... It messes with your uh, stomach. Like Everyone reacts differently, but I had a really bad stomach after that. 2010, so basically this operation, like spinal, like they put a rod of titanium in your back and they put pins and a pin in my hip as well. Sounds a bit gross, but yeah. It's one of them serious operations that when, like me, in my, in my condition, you need it like to stay upright, to keep the posture because, you know, it's uh, the muscles that I haven't got the, the capability of normal muscles to keep you, you straight, if you know what I mean, in that sense. Um, I'm terrible at, uh, at explaining anything, but it's t to keep the posture straight, you know, because you, you're sitting down all day, gravity affects you over the years. So at some point, people in my condition get told by doctors you, you need this operation. Otherwise, you you get older and you won't be able to have it. If you know, because you can't. The back ends up like a the shape of a question mark, which you really don't want. That's like painful. You know, you, you don't necessarily need it as such, but it does help. That's why I have great posture. It's not me sitting up straight. You know what I mean? And it's like from literally like low, lower neck to like 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 literally the whole, most of the back. They they met they name each vertebrae, but I don't know like T two or something down to T something else. Anyway, most of the back like all the way down. It's like being filleted like a fish. I always put it that way. It just makes me laugh. No, but yeah, I wasn't the only one. I had two mates who had had it before that, so I kind of knew the impacts. But everyone's different, everyone reacted different. And for me it was really the anaesthetic that I went under for this seven hour operation that got to me. And I was in hospital for two weeks. Not because the, well, you've got a big cast, not a cast, but like a dressing on your back. And you've got a lie on your back, how, how can you do that? So most times I was lying on my side, not eating in a hospital bed because my stomach was so bad and that anaesthetic just confused my whole body, literally. And I was on so much morphine, I was so high that was the best bit. Like, I just saying things that didn't even make sense. I was off my nut, and everyone was loving it. All the family coming to visit me, just like, cracking up at the things I was saying. Because it was just not me, like... I was like, high as a kite, literally. And I, I wasn't even pressing the button for more morphine. Like, so I wasn't in that much pain then. So every day they'd ask you, like on a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, ten being no pain at all. How much pain do you feel? You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have an idea. Like five, six, I don't know, something like that. And it was just two weeks of just getting better, basically. And same when I got home for a while. That summer was the first summer we didn't go to Italy. So that, that was a big thing too, because we go to Italy every year. And it was the first time I spent one of my birthdays in England, probably. Great. And it was great though. But I mean, I was at home a lot that summer, just pissed off most of the time, because of the pain I was in, like, not pain, but like, discomfort at times. It's just something new for your body to take, like a new organ. It's like a new part of the body, like, nah. It's not for the faint of hearted. I was only 16, but boy, I did I grow up it, like after that operation. It's seven hours under. And it's like, I, I kid you not, like before, I was like, I knew it was like a turning point. But yeah, 
fear, you always got a bit of fear when it's sort of thing. So I was like, hold on, how is this going to go? Is this going to go well? I hope so. And it did. Well, in the long run, it could be now. I mean, um, it's many years ago, but I had to stop playing Pouchy football, and that was annoying as well. And getting back into that, I, I, well, that, that hurt, because the first tackle always hurts. If you had any sort of injury like that or operation, it, it's just out completely. It's just another level of getting used to it again, because nowhere near as comfortable as this chair, a football chair, or the way as a sport is quite aggressive, so you forget about the pain and it comes back. But no, after that, I wasn't really on painkillers, the old paracetamol, but mainly when I was in the hospital, I was just high on morphine. And it, it was a lot of banter, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I did not eat near enough. Lost loads of weight. I, think I was trying to gain weight up once I came out. Like I am now again, because they're trying to fatten me up, these doctors. As if I'm a Christmas turkey. You know, what are they going to do? Cook me at Christmas? But I'm never, you know what I mean? They're trying to fatten me up. But everyone's metabolism is different. Like, I, I don't know what their problem is. Yeah, maybe I, I need to gain weight yet, but... It's easier said than done, you know, and then I can lose weight easily. But um, now at the time, like, I had a bit of meat on me before the operation. So, you know, it wasn't that bad that I lost the weight. Well, it was, but not for me. I didn't feel like it was a problem. But just getting back to reality and, like, getting back into a normal routine, normal life. Because there was a lot of changes, like, I was a bit taller as well. My neck was a bit longer of a giraffe go thing going on. So, it was, no, it was um, a year that I wouldn't forget, 2010, like whenever, I, if you think back, if you reminisce, whatever, most people do, but they say, in general thinking is kind of detrimental to your health. It's kind of what's gonna make you feel worse in certain situations. If you overthink things, I said it the other day on the live stream, to overthink a situation it doesn't help. Sometimes just it's got to be just go with the flow. Up on the pitch when I'm playing Pajio football, some things are just instinctive. Like when you change gear in a car, or you ride the bike, you know, it's just muscle memory. So, now getting back into that was, you know, it took a while, but um, it was great once I came back. I felt like a new player. Honestly, I. I did play better after that. I kind of changed my game. Less aggressive, more tactical, I don't know. Because I, I don't go in for big tackles all the time. I can, if needs be, but it doesn't look like I go in for any tackles. Like, you look at me and think, nah, he's, rub nah, he's not gonna, he's not gonna hurt me in a tackle. Well, <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, Pajia football, at that time it was a, it wasn't as competitive, well it was. It wasn't at, weren't at the level we are now as a team. Um, I was in the team I'm, I'm in now. And before I joined the team I was at before. I was at from 2013 till 2017. Which I'll get onto in a minute because that's another year that was really key to my growth as a person. As a human being on earth. But yeah, so 2010, good, well it was good in the long run but stressful as well because we never we didn't you didn't know what's going to happen seven hours under you know being chopped open literally um but people like cringe when I obviously they're not you would cringe if you've not had any surgery like that but yeah when they explained to me I was like nah I'm not feeling this but they, you know really I think back like what I was brave back then I'm not brave now back then I was like yeah if this is better for me, I'll do it. Fine. And people were like, oh my God. But, you know, it's a serious thing. But I was like, whatever, just do it. Like, you can't just... Even that, I didn't overthink it. If I thought about the detail, what they were doing to me while I was under, like, chopping me open, like that. Nah. If you thought about that for a second, then you just throw up or just have to walk, be out the, go out of the room or alleviate yourself from the situation. But no, I didn't think in detail. I just went with it, because 
if you're under anesthetic. You're not going to feed it, so why not? Why not? Let's go for it. I mean, a lot of people have operations and they're used to it because they've had so many. So I'm lucky in that sense that I haven't had that many. And it's the longest I've been in the hospital like, ever. I've never been like stayed overnight for any sort of problem like that. So that was the first. And that was a bit annoying because like it's a ward, so there's a lot of nurses running around. So you're not always gonna get help when you need it. But I did have a TV. So that did help. That was a big part of it. You know, watching daytime TV was like really annoying and boring, but yeah. I had music, I had my iPod, so bang on some tunes. And then a lot of the nurses missed me when I left. One of them was like proper emotional. Made me a card and a cake and all that. But, oh, thank you. I can't remember what I said, but like. No, um, and there was the journey home. In an ambulance, that was painful. Because every bump hurt like a mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, just. It was really annoying. I was like, can you go slower, please? You just avoid the bumps. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that journey, I was just thinking a lot like. Things are got like things are gonna change, I don't know. Nothing was bad before, but like I was like telling myself all these things like you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. Like I was really positive in some sense, but like at the same time appreciating what I'd been through to get to that moment and how things were only gonna get better. So I was going home. I was getting to be at home. Which was the only thing I wanted. When I was there I just wanted to leave the whole time. They're like, no, you're not going to your well. I'm fine. But, you know, everyone looks forward to coming back home. It's like I've been away for ages. Like I was on holiday, but not on holiday. So it felt weird. The weirdness was there for a while. Everything felt different, I know. It's like, I, I felt like I was like some sort of character out of like Avengers, like Iron Man. Bit of metal in me, you know what I'm saying? But it, was, it is annoying when I go through metal detectors because they do detect the titanium. So it's beeping every time. Obviously the chair beeps as well because it's all, it's all metal so the chair's going to make something beep. But yeah, it's not good for metal detectors. But titanium doesn't rust, so I hear. Uh, but I'm just grateful that there's such great doctors to do it because born in, being born in other countries, you don't have the same privilege like of, of medical, you know, of a hospital for example. Some people like don't get that. So I'm lucky in that sense, in the country where they do this sort of operation. Because, it, I mean, they've been doing it for years, it's not a new operation, but it's intense. And it doesn't always go perfectly. But it did, it did for me. And that year just makes me appreciate anything. So when you get these people like, you know, they're having operations to make make their make their body parts bigger or smaller or different shape, like why waste going under the knife? Like why waste your time doing that when there's people who need operations that can't get them, but you're doing it for fun, out of choice? Yeah, okay. If someone can have the choice to change something about their body if they want to, fine. But like, I would never put myself through an operation that I didn't need, through some sort of medical procedure that was unnecessary and risk being ill because of something you chose to do that's just my opinion like do what you want people but honestly it, it comes a time where you've got to decide like is it really worth it risking everything risking my health for this thing that's like it's like it was kind of a material thing in it because people are worried about what other people see them as or perceive them as so that's where with this these pointless, like, adaptations to your own body, like, that you don't even need. You know, I mean, mine was necessary. But I didn't go, oh, could you, could you change my nose while you're at it? No. Could you, I don't know, whatever, surgery. But, no, I just, don't, I don't agree with it. You can do it, fine, I'm not going to kill someone in the street just because they've got fake lips or something, you know what I mean? Or fake whatever. But that's just my opinion. Don't don't risk it. It's unnecessary. 
uh, and you see it go wrong all the time, especially the fake um, lip, like the things that make your lips bigger, the fake injections they do, when it's just cement they put in you, or silicone, like fake silicone. Yeah, let's not get into that. I mean, it's a lucrative job. Don't get me wrong, but there's re we need real doctors. But yeah, that was 2010, in a nutshell. Formative year. So yeah, 2017. Um, this was the year I had to go back to my old team in Padre Football. Um, I've said what I've said about it in the past. My opinion has totally changed about it now. How I feel about it has changed. But of course, the outcome is different to what I expected in some ways, in others, no. Um, so yeah, 2017 though, apart from that, it was a great year. Like, uh, our family got bigger and I met new people, made closer friends. You know, um, meeting people is like the best thing to do. Like, is it like human connection? There's nothing more important than that and more vital to like our existence as people, like connection with other people, like meeting, communication, you know, it's vital to being a human being. Um, so yeah, that was a great year. Uh, I'm not going to go like bit by bit because I can't remember everything that year, but it's also the year I started vlogging. How could I forget that? Um, and it, it was the year I went to there was a, a charity that helps me a lot called the Muscle Health Foundation. They had an event about employability for disabled people and that was in April at the Glaxo Smith & Klein headquarters. It's a tongue twister. GS, GSK? Yeah, anyway, in Stevenage. And it was like a workshop about employability, basically. Enabling disabled people to get employed, giving you the right tools to get employed talking about what you aim to do with your life, what the future holds, what you're trying to work towards, what kind of job you're after, and what kind of person you want to be. And it was like a workshop all about that over a whole weekend, and that really set things into gear for me. I mean, at that point, I was already watching a lot of YouTube, like Casey Nye's that, um, and so on. Um, and seeing the way they did it really inspired me too. And there's a few local, like, small time uh, vloggers that I watched as well and no I didn't think that I could ever didn't think of it as a, something I could do like YouTube I didn't think like okay I could do this as a career and even when I was at uni all those years studying journalism it never crossed my mind because I was wanting to be a radio DJ so badly or in that line of work and I slowly start, turned away from that I didn't, want, I didn't want to be a written journalist or anything like that because it wasn't my thing, basically. So, no, through this workshop, this was around April in 2017, uh, it made me realise that I've got to do something, like, I've got to make a job for myself or get a job, or, you know. So I, I'd spent so long searching and I'd worked as a volunteer for this particular... No, I worked, that was after. I, basically, I worked as a volunteer for this charity following this event like in October of 2017 if I'm not mistaken, I don't know should write stuff down really but here we go, um, anyway so then after that, I, it was like a week later I started YouTube, like I just I watched a few tutorials watched a lot of vlogs took a big step forward literally it was brave to do this because what people think of you how you're going to be perceived on camera, hate comments, this and that, potential fame, or you know, I don't know. But my goal was not to become famous. It was to do something with my bloody life, not to just waste time. And I know that I'm a good talker, so the radio thing is where that came from. So I knew I could talk. Um, I had a GoPro, and all you needed was a GoPro or an iPhone. I had a GoPro, I had an iPhone, I had a Mac with some editing software, pretty basic, still basic what I use today on this, but um, yeah, I had a Mac, so I thought, why not, go for it, and my first vlog 
was a shopping centre with my cousin and a friend of ours and my brother. And it was terrible. But it had to be because you have to learn. And it would be because it's the first one. And I made a lot of terrible vlogs. But I've made a lot of great vlogs too. In other people's opinion, not just my opinion based on views. It's not about views, it's about creating something and putting it out there in the universe. And putting a stamp on on you know on on the universe is I don't know. Doesn't really like it's not making a huge difference but I don't care because I've got my audience. But it doesn't matter. At the beginning it was a small audience. But I still felt a responsibility in what like, what I was saying. But at the same time, over over the years vlogging I've um cared less about people's opinion because I've got so many different people that watch that I can't please everyone and not everyone's going to get every joke or every thing I talk about or like every type of music I talk about or whatever but um no I grew as a vlogger from then that year was just the formative year and of course that what was it about June is when I got the email that I had I could no longer play at the be at the top top it like uh, for Aspire, who's the best team in England at the time. And well, it's kind of well, they they haven't won the league in the last two years. But when I was joining them, they'd already won many many leagues. Had the best players, um, the England captain, for example, many talented players that had been around a long time, and they were looking for a new player. No, that was in twenty thirteen. They were looking for a new player, obviously. But I mean, in 2017, as I'm saying, is the year that I had to leave that team. I'd been there for four years. Um, I joined in 2013. Um, but yeah, I'd been there for four years, won a lot of trophies, cups, uh, leagues, but I did not play near enough. And from both sides, uh, we knew that like my player manager knew that and I knew that um, but I never really got annoyed about it or really like you know I got upset about it I just dealt with it however many apologies I got for not playing in certain finals or whatever or coming on late as a sub and I scored a fair few goals when I played but when I played you know and every other player like when you got a player manager you were lucky because they understand what it is to be a player. They have the same, same, same want, wants and needs you have as a player, and they understand that in some ways. So, from his point of view, maybe it was. I definitely believe it was, out of, wanting me to grow as a player that, he made this decision, and I had to. I agreed with it in the end. At first, I was sent some angry emails, back and forth, between the you know, the, the top people at the club. Um, but yeah, in the end, I just came to the decision that I would go back to my former team, team I'm at now, once again, and have been for two years. But it took a while to get to that decision. Uh, but it, all this was around June time, July. So by the time I went to Italy in August, it was all sorted. And I knew I was going back to my former team. And I was so happy, like, excited for the new challenge. Because I'd been in a team where I was like surplus to requirements some of the time on the bench. I, I was never a main player. But it's not because I wasn't good enough. It's because the team, the starting team was the starting team. And that was it. And many friends of mine from other clubs said, but surely you, you are good enough. I've seen you play, you are good enough. And so I had a lot of doubt that I wasn't for a while. And then I just got over it. As soon as I stepped on the training ground for the first time with, with my my new team technically um, I knew it was different like I felt equal to the other players because I didn't really feel that before I don't know if I'm being honest I didn't didn't feel part of the clique because if you're not in the clique you know what I'm saying if you've not been there I hadn't been there well four years is long enough went to the Champions League in Denmark that was a great time, that was the best time that particular tournament a week in Denmark, met so many other players other people but yeah, 2017 was that year and that had to happen like it was a, a I remember the day I got the emails, great day 
I even vlogged that day. I made a vlog the same day. But I did not say. It took me about a few weeks to say. And then in one vlog I spilled all the beans, got really angry and just explained everything in a really angry way. But now I look back like I shouldn't have done that, but I felt vengeful, like I want to take some revenge. I want to, and in one ways I did, because I scored against my ex team. I scored against them the following, like that season, the first season at my new club. Scored against my ex team, and yeah, the celebration is, well, it was on TV, it was like Sky Sports, I think, came down. Yeah, some charity anyway, some TV channel. I think it was Sky, Sky News. I mean, my celebration was caught on camera. We lost 6 2, but we scored two goals against them, the top team. And, like, to me, it felt like we won it. For me personally, because I got my revenge, I got the goal against them. And by God, I've showed it in the vlog a million times. I had to rub it in so much to all my ex teammates in some ways. Not that it was anyone's fault, but I'd moved on, yeah, and I, I felt like a new player. It felt so much better. I, like, respect it. I'm not. Res I had respect before, yeah, but like on the same level as the other players. Do you know what I mean? Not, I didn't feel, because in the other team I, I could feel down high at times and like me and my dad would argue on the way back from a match. Like, why didn't you play? What's going on? you got to tell him, you know. We, we'd argue, we'd have back and forths, me and my dad, about why I didn't play. There'd be a lot of frustration, a lot of anger. And then I came to this team and I played so much more. I want to play all the time, every second. Because I, I, I know I'm worth it. Like That sounds like a L'Oreal advert and it's a cliche because you're worth it. But, you know, I know I know what I can do. And for those four years, I kind of lost that. I forgot why I was playing. All these, this ego that got ahead of me. Um, but then I really wasn't the player I am today. But I credit those four years to the player I am today. Wouldn't have been as good as I am now ever or had the vision or the, the tactical awareness that I do. There's so much more to learn. And seeing the way the England team won the the basically the Pouch of Football European Championships, the Ebb for Nations Cup. Seeing them win that was just rejuvenating as well. And a few of my ex teammates or players I played against were there. So that was amazing. And I was happy for them all of them. Honestly, because like, I understand what it is to be a player and to win something like that, you know, to be part of a, a family. So yeah, I moved on and started a new team. We had, the team had changed. Since I'd been at this team before, it had changed a bit, if you know what I mean, because I started at this team that I went to Aspire, then I came back to Muscle Warriors, which is the name of our team now. Um, and. Yeah, there was a change in players. The nucleus of the team was the same. Great friends of mine have always been since my early days in the sport. And it was like a family as well. Um, and the time when I stopped caring about... Well, I, I would always bring up what happened to me in the other team. Oh, I didn't play this and that, I was on the bench. So this is much better all the time. But I got more... less. Ang I was less angry what happened to me because I'd seen other players go through similar things. And I was like, I'm not the only one. It could be worse. Why am I getting depressed or holding a grudge? Don't hold a grudge. And I, I let go of that grudge. And it's different now. Like, I, I was dreading that first training session, going back and seeing my ex-teammates. Luckily, they weren't. Lucky for them, they weren't there in some ways. Or, you know, of course, my ex-player manager that made the decision, but I don't hold grudges anymore. And I'm past that, but in that year I was holding a big grudge. I was like worried for what I might do. <laughs> I don't know. Is it? I felt guilty for thinking like that, but at the same time I felt that it was the right feeling. To I felt right about what I was saying. I felt like my it was true. And it's, at the club we have this thing called the pyramid system, and this is what I was a victim of. And I have proof that this doesn't work. This system is where you swap players around from each team within the club. We have four teams, we had three at the time. I think, yeah. 
So yeah, I was the first victim. So they moved me out and they got a player from a team in the championship like us, fellow team, and they swapped them with, they put them in the top team, the team where I was. And that was fine, yeah, but then now they've got another player from that lower team and that same team um, literally almost disbanded this this year because they didn't have enough players for the national tournament and they had three players in some games and it's four aside so you can't play properly with three players and they had three players so they were playing all this time it's unbelievable and well, they've got players now they've got players on the youth team the development team and the, the another team within our club but they almost fell apart because players were moved on to the top team where I was and that could have been avoided not for this, this pyramid system yeah they want to move players around but are you going to go and sit in the top team and sit on the bench the whole time like I did because pretty much it's what happens and you know I say to people look I I, enjoy, I didn't enjoy it there like necessarily I learned a lot I got better as a player um, but yeah it's not it can't can be a toxic environment if you're not starting all the time it gets to you it got to me and it wasn't until I left I burst the bubble and got out of the bubble that I realised this that every like for years in conversation someone asked me about project football like yeah yeah we won this trophy did you score no I didn't play I was on the bench. Oh, I played a bit in this game. And I kept saying things to like, m like, to justify it, but like, I knew that I should have been playing more. And it, it's like I didn't believe I deserved to, I don't know. At some point I would blame myself, thinking back to it, and I'd say, okay, maybe, maybe I should have played better. Maybe I should have taken more chances. But how come, like, I didn't have the chance to do that. And in the email it was stated, they were sorry that I didn't get the chance to to do that more, to prove more. I wasn't given enough chances and I needed to move on to grow as a player. And it's true. I hate to say it, but it's true. I don't hate to say it, but like, I wanted to be right myself. And But I'm welcome back, apparently. But that, you know, words, just words. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go back at this point. They've got enough players. I don't want to put my team in jeopardy because of some selfish thing, but I wouldn't go necessarily go back. I'm loving the challenge I've got at the moment. And it speaks for life as well. Like, don't hold grudges because you never know when you might need that person later on or you might meet them again in a different scenario. You know, just make the most of it. And yeah, now I'm a lot happier. I like banter with the teammates as well. It's a different level, like. But in, in my team, there was times when, like, I felt left out a bit, I'll be honest. I wasn't even the youngest one there. But that was the new one. No, so. That is the door. So, yeah, that was that part of the year. Couldn't wait for that feeling to end. And then I forgot about it all when I went to Italy. Um, that particular summer. So I knew I was going to a new team, so I was completely relaxed. Not relaxed, but like, looking forward to it. Glad that, that I knew I was going to play more and be and feel valued, even if I was at the other team and didn't feel it. So that was, it was, it was uh, different. And I explained to a lot of people in Italy and they felt my side, they were like, no offence to anyone, but like, they were like, what, what a bastard, you know? Because like, I obviously I exaggerated a bit, but you know, in general, like people are like, like, what the hell? Are you a great player, you know? And I was, I was just happy to have moved on. Um, so that summer was just great, and then, um, yeah. So I just said the family got bigger. So my uncle, um, basically, he met his wife that year, and. She happened to have a, a daughter around, uh, by the time she was about, what, 18, 17? Yeah, anyway, so we met, like, her and the, the daughter, and it was great. And me and, me and my brother were, like, the 
the, well, the reason they met, really, in some ways. The reason my, my uncle met his wife. Um, so that was just, that was interesting. And then so befriended these people, basically. And like, knew nothing of any, any anything serious at the time. It was just when they met, you know. So like, it was just like, oh, we met some new people. This is great, this is amazing, you know. Um, so, and she's like my, literally the sister I never had now. Like, she, she's literally a cousin. Well, you know what I mean, like step cousin, but cousin nonetheless. And so it's like, I've accumulated more family in that year and it was like great a great and there's a photo I've got from that year from that day actually and when it's in like a, a town Avelino near where my grandparents are from a town where we go every year like on my mum's side that is anyway it's a long story anyway so we were there and there's a picture like that I have I had saved as like my screensaver for ages on my phone just because seeing the photo reminded me of that day and how great I was because I knew about the fact that I'd left this difficult situation at a team and gone to a new team and in general I felt good about life and you don't always feel good, you're not meant to always feel good you have shitty days, shitty years, shitty months where you feel like nothing's going your way and alone and all that and depressed sometimes, you know, everyone has a day like, like in each day there can be a moment or in each week there can be one day or an hour or something where you just feel shit about everything and there could be a time where you feel absolutely over the moon and there's no necessarily not necessarily a reason to be but yeah so in that way I just felt felt happy I was vlogging on that day two going around and it was just a happy moment um, and it was a great summer because with my friends in that particular town um, we do a thing every year where we stay up all night. It's called After, and we stay up to like, well, we stay up till seven in the morning, basically, till the sun comes up. And then, well, it's, there's a lot of alcohol involved, but then by the morning we're drinking coffee just to stay awake, which is not good, because then you want to sleep after you've had a night out. Well, 24, been awake for 24 hours. You've got, you got to sleep, but you can't, you've had coffee. So then the next day started already, so what do you do? Sleep in the afternoon. That's what we were doing, but yeah, so... And the group of friends we had over there became a bit tighter. Like, because every year we, you know... They were, I don't know. People were younger, we were less social, I don't know. It just changed that, something clicked that year. And I, I got a great friend that was like on ne the, lives next door to our family house there. And she's like, I've been a great friend for like at least 10 years. And like, we joined like, her group of friends and like the people that hang out in the town. But these people that hang around the, the young people, most of the year they're not there. Like, a lot of them live like in Napoli or in bigger cities further away, like further out, if you know what I mean. Um, but they all come back for this one week. It's like a festival, it's like a, fest like a religious festival. Like the Saint, I don't, I don't know, some, something religious anyway. Like, well, we yeah, carry like a giant um, statue of someone religious around the town and like, yeah, it's a Catholic thing basically. So yeah, there's all that going on and, and like live music in the evenings and stuff. Um, but yeah, we have this particular day where we don't sleep. Like we just get drunk and hang out and play music and chat about life and just do young people stuff. Um, yeah, most of which I can't talk about on here. Some of it I can't, you know. Don't even knowing everything about me. Need some element of mystery. Can't be all out there. Well, most of it, this is a podcast, I've got to get real. And I'm getting real on this one for sure. Digging deep. <laughs> I need someone to interview me and just get, get all the emotion out, you know what I'm saying? Get me crying on here, you know what I'm saying? No, so yeah, and every summer's great, but that summer was just even better. And my cousin who lives here with us, lived here with us, he came back to Italy with us that summer, and we hang out with him and his mates too, in Puglia, which is where my dad's from, in a town called Canosa, near Bari. Bari you may know because it's a team 
where Antonio Cassano used to play. Um, Antonio Conte used to manage, and many good players played there over the years. Back in the day, of course. Um, so yeah, that's the other place we went. And so I hung out with my, my cousin. He's older than me, he's 28 now, he was 26 at the time. I was 23, so it's like not much of an age gap really. Met all his mates from school and stuff that he used to hang around with when he was young. So that was great, and it was like, he, great for him as well to integrate us into that and like hang around with his friends and like feel part of it really, feel part of something and like go to the beach without having to drag up, like being dragged around by our parents to whatever beach they wanted to go to, just go with friends instead and just hang out. Well, that day we didn't actually tell my parents. We said like, oh, we went with like one of our other cousins to the beach or something. I can't remember what we said, what bullshit story we made up. But we went some, well, we, we didn't go, we went to, my cousin has a mate as like a, a beach, a bit of land on the beach that they own. They own a bit of land like, just like before the beach. And then you got the sand. So then the sea's there. The beach is actually free, but they own like the bit of land leading up to it. It's a bit of farmland basically, I guess. So we hung around there, played music, like just hung around on the beach. That was it. And then same night, one of the nights we went to like a, was it that year? I think it was the same year. We went to like a, a party on the beach. We've been to a few of them over the years. But again, like normally, it's all with family and stuff, so you can't really get crazy. But <laughs> that was until about 5 a.m. Because that night people like sleeping on the beach. It's a night where you like stay on the beach all night, but I couldn't be bothered. I don't, I don't like sand, to be honest. I don't want to sleep in sand. So yeah, it went there, that was crazy as well. It's another moment where I just, I don't know, it's just a great time. Like you can't relive the, you can redo certain things, go to certain place again. You can't relive that moment and you have to live in it. It's hard to live in the moment, but you can. And then, well, photos help you remember and all that. So that was great. But that was a great summer. Like, things changed that year, I know. For me, like, Italy is like, it's so different here. The culture is just, I don't know, it's hard to put into words. The food, ah, oh, the food. The food is to die for. The food, ah, uh, I don't know. But that's it. That's the weather. Some people don't like it that hot, but I do. Because here, what bloody summer we got? First day of summer tomorrow, and like, what's 18 degrees? Come on. So, yeah, um, the rest of that year is a blur, kind of. But now, like I said, I worked in a voluntary job for um, this charity. I, I was cold calling people and emailing and stuff. And that was fun for a bit, but then became monotonous and terrible. I was like, no, no thank you. And then from, as I, as I told you earlier, I had this like employability workshop thing um, as part of this charity to help the same people like me get jobs and be employable, if you like, and really value our own ability. And of course, this was by like, was it the following year? Yeah, the following, maybe the following year or September of that year, I can't remember. I don't know, anyway. No. I think it was, was it that summer? I don't know if it was that summer, anyway. After the, after that particular April, I was doing, I did this, um, I worked at this, like, the Chamber of Commerce in Hertfordshire, for Hertfordshire, I think. Yeah, Hertfordshire. And that was like in an office based environment. And I loved the people there, it was great. But that is where I knew an office was not for me. And you know, I kind of vowed not to ever work in an office and just dove into the YouTube. To be honest, even the changing of teams made me dive into YouTube even more and do more videos and more vlogging. It's long before I started podcasting, but a lot of vlogging, 2018, was busy for vlogging, man. I was in a, a documentary that a friend of mine that, that was at uni at the time, well, he's finished uni now, but at the time they made this movie all about a person of interest and I was that person. 
based on like my, my life and passion of football and living with a disability and all that. And they want to make a part two of this, but anyway, that's going into 2018. But overall, 2017 was another formative year. And I look back at it with such like appreciation for like the good and the bad stuff that happened. So I realised it all helps. The bad leads to the good. Out of such a bad, new, bad news to leave that team, at the time I felt shit about it. I felt like I was going to quit football for good. But this is it. I said I'm leaving. I'm going to another club completely. Forget this, you know. I got talked out of it by one of my mates at the team I'm at now. It's like, no, I don't. This will be you know, a bad choice, this and that. And a lot of people said, don't leave the club. It's the best club in England. And it is the best club, biggest. One, we've got four teams, come on. Where else was I going to go? I was just being stupid. But yeah, so that from that bad negative thing, all this greatness came. In that summer holiday, I met so many people. The family grew. I, I basically now have a cousin, I, more than one cousin, I could call family, literally, like a sibling. And that just grew from there. And then, of course, my uncle, he announced his uh, engagement. And then that was great. And then they came over in November of that year, I think, for the like, visit to London and the engagement party. So I got to hang out with my new cousin again. Well, you couldn't, I couldn't call her cousin at that point. Like, do you know what I mean? So they were married, but. So yeah, that was November. That still a great year. It's still going. Like it kept going. All the greatness. Um, so I got to vlog a, a lot more. And we took them around London and stuff, and all this. It was around Christmas time, so there's a lot going on in London as well. And I love being a tour guide of London. So many cousins have come over that I have to show round and take a tour around London. I love doing it though, I love it, but my brother hates it because he's a negative, depressed, old person. Putting it lightly, that is. But yeah, he's got his own way of being, I've got my own way of being. Uh, he hates people, I love people, basically. Uh, but, you know what I credit that to? I credit that to me being the way I am, different, and like, you know, some people are like, whoa, hang on a minute, you know what I mean? Like, in general, when they see something different, they judge. Not judge, but like, of apprehension and stuff. So I'm more social, because I want to avoid that and break that ice, and be more friendly with people, because, you know, it can be a bit weird for some people. For kids, like, intimidating. So you've got to break that barrier with kindness. That's what I do, and like, I'm willing to make new friends all the time. Because it's maybe difficult to, in some cases, but like, when I was younger, so I was more open to meeting new people and stuff. My brother, being able-bodied, I don't know if that's the difference, or just his brain, but he doesn't like people because he's got his friends and that's it, he doesn't care about getting any new friends necessarily. Unless they're friends with benefits, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah, that's the difference um, between us, kind of, but yeah, back to the story. So that was November 2017, and I'm just so happy I had this new family this new people added to the family. It was great because, like, on my mum's side, I've got one first cousin. My dad's side, I've got loads, but I'll be honest, I've got loads of cousins in Italy on my dad's side, but it's maybe three or four or five or six. That's quite a lot, actually. But a few that I'm actually close with, like the ones that have come here, like Fabio, you know, who lives, who used to live with us, he lives locally now, he rents a room. Um, got my other cousin in Milan, both of them in Milan actually, that both have been here in different times, at different times in my, like, over the years they've stayed in England with us, so I'm very close to them too. And this new cousin, of course I've got so many cousins that, that I'm close with now, well, I've got so many that I'm not, so to add one more to that circle was great. Um, it's weird, like some cousins that I'm actually related to, I don't really speak to that much don't have that much in common. No, I mean, obviously that's obvious. But, um, no, so I just don't, I just don't get on, I don't know. I'm not as close as I am with some some others, you know. 
I don't know. I mean, some people they like got no cousins, but they've got loads of close friends that might as well be family. Like I got, I got a lot of friends as well. I got friends too, but only one or two like hang out with the family and know the family in some way, or as you, you know, what I mean, just chill at home, like come to my house. Like it's different nowadays, but um, do you know, what I mean, some people like have no cousins or no siblings, but they have loads of close friends. You know, so it's different in that way. Um, I, I can say no more about the year. This is a great year. Good and a formative year, like I said, a hundred times already. Uh, I was going to mention some sort of earlier year in my life, but can't remember many. Maybe 2006, because Italy won the World Cup, maybe. I don't know. But those are formative years of my life. 2010, 2017. Because, I, I mean, in that time a lot had changed, because I'd been, I'd, after 2010 I did A-levels, did uni, <laughs> um, and then I'd done, done uni, I had to retake a few, exactly, 2016 I finished, and for a year I was looking for jobs, until, like I said, April 2017 is when I started vlogging, and that changed my life, and here we are today, and there's no other feeling like it, like, I love talking basically, and here I am. And like, I've been doing the live streams again recently, not necessarily to please you guys, but because I love doing them. It, it shouldn't always be to please the audience. I love you guys and thank you always, but it shouldn't be that. It should be to do it because you love it. Uh, obviously, the purpose of creating something and putting it in the world, that was the overall goal, like, create something every day. Because some people don't, like create one thing, and that's it. I mean, Casey Neistat said it many times on his videos, like, it used to be a filmmaker and you make one film a year. You never made anything else really because you were scared of failing. And then he started doing vlogs every day, daily vlogs, and he realized that it doesn't matter if you fail. You're creating something every day and you get better at creating stuff if you do that every day, if you make a movie every day. And he's great at making, he was great from the beginning, but he realized how good he was when he could do that every day. Like instead of spending months on some huge production, do a little vlog. And I said, I had the GoPro, I had the, the iPhone, I did so many vlogs over that summer and in Italy. Um, some memorable vlogs that got loads of views. But I did the summer ones on my phone. But I just so, felt so free that year. And I felt like a bit of a, I don't know. Like I said, it was, it was different to any other year. And since then it's been great though. Every year, last year in Italy was just immense. 2018 has also been a great year. It's been difficult as well. Well, hold on. This year, yeah, the, yeah, no, yeah, 2018's been difficult. 2019 has been alright. Up and down. Great as well, though. Not bad, of course, 2018. It led on from 2017, in some ways. Um, but yeah, I mean, just great times. To make the most of every moment, really. I mean, I can't wait for this summer because we've got plans to just be lit all the time, just be gone on alcohol too much. Can't wait for that, but um, that's what we do in Italy. I mean, it's different here. Maybe once or twice a week, on a weekend, head to Camden, you know, down to the local pub, things like that. Clubbing every now and then, I need to vlog more of that. But I did do recently at Shaka Zulu, but I've been at, like, there's a club in Watford we go called Prison, but they're all full of bloody 19, 18 year olds. And um, I don't know, we're a bit more mature than that, me and my brother. Well, he is, uh, I'm not mature at all. I am, but like, I'm not. Like, I'm fun. Am I fun? No. What I mean is like, I'm a bit more carefree than he is. A bit more relaxed about things. Like I said more social, I don't know if that's true. But, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that's just the way I am, I guess. I've had to be that way. If I was just mean and like horrible, well, my, my, my brother would agree that I am mean and horrible. And just annoying, just annoying is the main word. But, um, no, I mean, if I was just nasty, then does it make, make other people feel worse? Like, people remember you about how you make them feel. They might not remember your name or your face. Well, I mean, they do, because you can't buy this face anywhere else. <laughs> uh, and this hair, can't forget me by this hair. Like the geezer at the, at the club on Saturday, at Shaka Zulu. He's, I was like, do you remember me from last time? He's like, yeah, how can I forget that haircut? 
No. You can't forget this hair. It's mentioned there, I've got no gel by the by the way. <laughs> um What was I saying? What, what, what was I saying? Yeah, anyway, so I'm, I'm different to my brother in that sense. But I've needed to be. I need to break the ice and, like, be more friendly with people because, get me wrong or not, it can be intimidating. Um, if you know, met someone who's never met someone in a wheelchair necessarily that's as vocal as I am in that way or as social, I don't know. So maybe they're a bit wary in that sense, like, if you meet, if I, I haven't met many, for example, I haven't met many blind people in my life. Um, but when you meet, when I meet one, I'm wary because it's new to me, like in some ways. But then they make you laugh and you break the ice, and you have a bit of banter, and that's it. For example, you know. And but I just meet. I like meeting new people, and it's not always in the vlog because my the real reaction you get from someone might be tainted by camera sometimes, maybe behind the scenes and hidden cameras but sometimes I just want to embrace that moment when I meet someone new and like have a conversation hold a, co like a deep conversation not just how's the weather you know, a more deep one but the meaning of life, no but um yeah, to have that connection, human connection there's nothing more important than that I think people forget that in the age of WhatsApp and Facebook FaceTime and whatever and just messaging people instead of talking face to face like yeah people a long way away you, you're my best mates some of that message how are you every now and then what's going on we have a bit of banter a bit of chat send a few funny memes and stuff have a joke and a laugh um, and that you know we do that all the time on whatsapp whether or not we're meeting in person but it's because physically we're far away that's it but someone lives down the road and you're messaging them like come on in this day and age like you can't really know how someone is actually feeling or acting when they're saying it through a text you can't read emotion through a text and it can come off the wrong way whatever you say um, you know if you're signing in them DMs um, you just got to have a good punchline I guess good chat up line but um, there's no human connection in that if, yeah FaceTime yeah fine but like FaceTime then people can like I, I don't know Depends who you're FaceTime, your family's alright, but more than that, it's a bit awkward. I never use it that much. It's because I'm crap at holding my phone up. But like, I probably drop it half the time. You drop it, you see, like, the, the underneath of my chin, where all the rolls are, you know? It's like some weird angle. Um, but yeah, hopefully more of the same this summer. By the way, I'm going to Wimbledon, if you haven't already heard. Um, it will be week two of Wimbledon on court two, so. I don't know who that's going to be, but we'll find out. Men's or women's. I don't mind either way. <laughs> either way will do. Um, but yeah, that's the summer. Coming up. I'm going to try and vlog that Wimbledon day. Um, tour of the Tottenham Stadium. Hopefully I can vlog, vlog that, I think. But yeah, it is time for lunch for me. It's about that time. Man's hungry time to eat and yeah thank you guys whatever time you're watching this hope you're having a good evening good day a good night whatever time of day I hope this has made you smile and think or reflect or hopefully not cry like in a bad way but get some sort of emotion out make you think or like something I don't know whatever it's made you feel I always made you feel something and don't forget about human connection because that is the key to life like communicating with other people, like learning about new new cultures, new like meeting different people. Do you know I mean not just being in the same circle all the time. Um, being social, you've got to be open to meeting new people and accept different beliefs. Because we're all different but we're all human, you're all pink on the inside. So everyone should be really on that same wavelength. You know? Smile more, that's it. Like, like it's weird sometimes to get some random geezer sm smiling at a kid on the bus. No, it doesn't work, but um, you know, realize that the way you treat others is the way they're probably going to treat you. And like, your first impression you make on them, you know, you better make it a good one. 
at least try, you know, make someone laugh, smile. That's how they're going to remember you, make them feel good or help them in some way. You know, keep it positive. But we all have bad days, just know that other people are going through the same shit on a different day. And when you're having a good day, someone else might not. When you're having a bad day, someone else will be having a good day. But just don't take it out on them. Just learn from it and cherish the human connections you make on a daily basis. And that is it from me. It's been a really long podcast, to be honest. And my voice is gone. <laughs> I had so much to say. Just like, came out of nowhere. But you know me. Big mouth, big nose. No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I love my nose the way it is. That's another thing. Don't be changing your body too much. Unless you really, 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 really want to. It's going to make you feel better. In some way. But sometimes, like, yeah. That's it. That's it, guys. That is vlog. It's not a vlog, is it? It's a podcast. Thank you, guys. Remember about about human connection. Don't forget. Don't forget to break the ice when you meet someone new. That's it. Just keep making memories and live in the moment if you can. Peace. I'm out, guys. Thank you. I want to slowly reverse away and disappear into the night. No, that's not going to work, is it? Right, yeah, Batman back there says bye as well. I can't do a Batman voice. Take it easy, fam. Peace. <laughs>